Hi, this is Ibarri and X from The Candid Frame. Just came back from a short trip to New York, and one of the places I went to was 42nd Street, Times Square. And it can be amazingly crazy. It's a very sort of chaotic place. There's so much light. There's so, there's so much people moving around. It can be a scene that can be very difficult to try and make a good photograph just because there's just so much busyness. And it can be really difficult trying to make a, a good frame out of so much chaos. So that sort of gave me an idea to talk about for this week's video. The idea of how do you make order out of chaos. And one of the things that I talk a lot about with my students is this idea of making a photograph about looking at a scene and slowly building an image rather than just trying to get off these quick snaps and hoping that you're fast enough to recognize something happening in front of you and pressing the shutter release button. So here are three images that sort of build on that idea. First, we have a shot by Christian Ferrer. This was made with a Sony 7S at 1 250th of a second at ISO 100. Now, one of the things I teach is this idea of looking for light first. When you go out to photograph, don't go out so much with the intent of looking for a particular type of subject or character. Go out with a blank slate and just walk around and just, just observe what's happening with light and shadow and allow that to dictate where you walk to and how you sort of evaluate the scenes. And that's the first Thing that appeals to me in this scene is the is the light and the presence of the shadow. Uh, it really and that light really allows the the colors to have a nice pop to it, and the shadows provide a sense of depth and shape to all the various graphic elements that exist within the frame. Now, once I get past the light, I start looking for setting, and there I start looking for line and shape, and you have some very strong repeating patterns that pervade the entire frame. The most obvious ones are these strong vertical lines uh, with these poles here that are mimicked here by these small windows that are in this, this building as well on the side of the building here. Then you have some very strong um, shapes like the side of the building, uh, this overall orange shape here, and this shape of this uh, sort of guide rail or something at the top of this building. Then you have the, the just the implied shapes created by the shoreline. There's, so there are these lines and the shapes that pervade the entire frame. You get this nice color contrast that's happening with the with the blue and the oranges and the browns. All of that is coming into play. And when I come upon a scene like this, I start thinking, okay, this is good bones. This is the good building blocks for an interesting image. So what I kind of advise a lot of photographers to do is to find scenes like this and take a look at your overall composition. Try to build a composition that would look good even if you didn't have a person in the frame. And I think Christian has sort of achieves that here with the sort of balancing out these strong vertical lines with these vertical lines here and including the shadow here in the frame. But the big issue he would have normally was this large area of negative space where there normally would be nothing, nothing happening. But he uses his own shadow here to help fill up that negative space, but more importantly, he gets the girl in here that provides a more dynamic element to a, to a relatively static scene. Having the girl running into the frame really helps fill up this negative space, but also gives a counterpoint to all these very still, static elements that uh, exist throughout the frame. These building blocks here provide for a really pleasing shot to sort of look at. But the girl is the flourish, is the gesture that helps elevate the shot from just being, you know, uh, uh, an exploration of shape and line, of it just being, you know, uh, an image of a, of a scene where really there's nothing happening. By having the girl present in the frame, something is happening, but she serves as not just the solo uh, a point of attention for the viewer, but as an element within an overall pleasing frame. And that's what I'm talking about when it comes to taking a look at a scene, especially one that's very chaotic, 
and trying to think about how can you build a shot by paying attention to light first and then shape and line to slowly build your composition. Okay, here we have a shot by Francis Bovard. This was made with a Sony uh, ILC-E6000 at 250th of a second at f3.5 ISO 3200. Now, this is a really chaotic scene, right? There's so much going on in terms of color, in terms of people, and it can be really difficult to try and create a really good frame out of a scene like this if you're not looking at it in the right way. And by why, what I mean by that is taking a look at this in terms of lines. Because one of the things that is making this image work is the implied diagonal lines that exist throughout this frame that lead you to the vanishing point here in the center of the frame. So just imagine these diagonal lines that are drawn throughout the frame. And you can see that all of these elements are sort of coming together to sort of point you towards the center area of the frame. It's, it's, a really, it's a really graphic scene, even though we don't have the strong, um, obvious shapes of the first image they are still there. Our, our eyes and our brain are still sort of imposing that sensibility of line and shape in a scene even as chaotic as this one. And it helps bring some order to a scene like this. And I think that's one of the challenges that you face when you're in a scene where there's so much busyness is not knowing where to start. What do I shoot? Because you just don't want to shoot a singular person without considering everything else that's happening in the frame because otherwise it just ends up a, a hot mess. There are just too many distractions, too many things that are competing with your main subject for, for the viewer's attention. But by using these implied lines and thinking about the scene graphically, then you have the building blocks of a good shot. Uh, I like this shot here because of the way these three people here are in the frame. This kid that's moving away here towards the left hand of the frame. And the way this young boy is looking up at this man. I don't know if it's his father or not, but there seems to be some connection between the the two there. Uh, this is a scene where I would probably camp out probably for at least a half an hour and just photograph different people coming into the frame. Because as much as I like this shot, I feel like there, there was a the potential for even something better. Just having the right person or right group of people coming into this frame to accentuate it even more. When you have a strong setting and you have good light and you have all of those things and you have the opportunity to camp out, and just like establish your presence right there in the frame and allow people to come to you and past you and you just shooting, it can be a remarkable opportunity to make an exceptional photograph. I think far too many times we make a shot and we're ready to move on. And you may be missing the best opportunity for a photograph that entire day if you just make one shot and you move on. Uh, I, I will not hesitate to stick around for a while if I know that 90% of what I'm looking for is in the spot that I found and that I just have to practice a little bit of patience for it to eventually pay off for me. Next, we have a shot by Extensco. I don't know if that's the way you pronounce it, but that's the way I'm saying it. Uh, this was shot with an Olympus EM5 at 1 1600th of a second at F8 ISO 200. Now, he here's a shot that, again, looks like a, a, a hot mess, right? But you start taking a look at it graphically, and then you start seeing all the repeating shapes, patterns, and line that pervade the entire frame, right? You see the strong verticals, you see the horizontals, you see the color contrasts that are happening between the, red, the reds, the greens, the blues, the grays. All of that interplay is happening within the frame. Don't even look at the people. Just take a look at what's happening with the overall overall frame and how the shot, the setting is, has the potential of being a really, really, really good shot, even when you don't have people there. But what I really like about this shot is the fact that it's not just the presence of just one person that makes this shot good. And oftentimes that's what we're hunting for, right? You know, that one person, that one gesture here, you have a multitude of different people who are all in pretty good places within the frame, creating a really nice balance in terms of the 
presence of people in different areas of the frame. We have the guy who's right there near the middle of the frame in the green shirt uh, next to the, to the stop light with the great gesture of his arm blocking the sun from uh, hitting his eyes. Then we have the people uh, at, towards the edges of the frame, the two guys that are uh, standing on top of that piece of concrete against the fence, the one guy with the blue and yellow uh, jacket. Then we have the two people sort of facing out, out of the frame, uh, one with in red, the other one was sort of a, a purplish uh, uh, t-shirt or or blouse, and then we have the one guy next to the uh, to the telephone poles. It, it, all of those people are sort of uh, playing off the various shapes that are making this shot really interesting for me. Uh, it 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 works, and it almost is a shot that shouldn't work because it's kind of breaks some of the rules. It's, even the, especially the rule of people sort of walking out of the frame. But the fact that you have two people there, it seems like to, it holds it in for me. It's not as big of an issue for me as it normally would be. But having those people in there provide a nice sense of scale, provide a nice sense of counterpoint to each other. Uh, and I really like the, the colors that exist within the people that are there, from the woman in the red on the right, uh, the light purple uh, on the far left, the green, the yellow and the blue. All of that stuff plays off really well against the colors that exist in the in the environment around it. Uh, even the sign up at the top of the frame is not problematic for me. I really like that uh, helping to sort of break uh, break up some of the negative space that exists there. We have some of the contrails here that help sort of keep this becoming uniform blue and, and negative space so you do have a large area of negative space but we do have just enough details here in the sky to prevent it from really sort of sucking the viewer's attention but it's it's a shot that really really works for me and it's the kind of shot that i think is really a, a challenging kind of shot to see if you can pull off because i think that you know after a while you you initially try to simplify scenes as a street photographer you try to eliminate stuff in order to try and make a as good a clean frame as possible but once you've done that and you've gotten to the point where you're doing that well at some point you start adding stuff back to the frame and challenge yourself to see whether or not you can still pull off a, a good frame i like that the photographer uh is going for that here this is the kind of shot uh, i'm actively trying to see and photograph when i'm out in the street and it is a mother to, to pull off well. There's always something in there that can, you know, wreck, wreck a shot. But it's a, a tightrope walk that when you pull it off, man, it's really, really that satisfying. So kudos to you for, for a really cool shot. All right, hope you found that helpful as usual. If you've not heard of The Candid Frame, The Candid Frame is a podcast which features conversations with some of the world's best photographers, not just street photographers, but every genre of photography out there. Just recently interviewed a New York photographer, Karsten Steiger, who uh, takes these amazing urban landscapes of New York City. And I know that you probably have seen countless images of New York, but you've not seen images like this. The perspective that he takes uh, uh, for these images goes beyond the kind of camera that he's using or the kind of Photoshop that he's applying. You really have to take a look at the shots, but even more importantly, take a look and listen to the interview, which will give you so much greater insight into his exceptional work. And if you want to submit images to the Candid Frame Flickr group, all you need to do is go to your computer and go to Flickr and do a search on the Candid Frame and ask to be added. And I'll be glad to do that. Uh, I was out for a week because I was traveling, but I've added everyone uh, who recently in the last week and a half uh, asked to be added. And you can do the same. Uh, avoid trying to add yourself using your tablet or your phone. That seems to be problematic. You'll have to go to a computer to, to be able to be added. But once you ask to be added, when three, within uh, about three or four days, I should get back to the queue and add you. And then you can contribute to the uh, community that we have here. So thanks again for joining me. And I'll see you next time.